On this episode of China Uncensored, are murder victims being used as entertainment? Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. The human body is an amazing thing. Almost every ancient civilization on Earth believed that in some way or another, the human body was created by the divine in the image of God, and people have taken the study of the human body very seriously. And more often than not, the human body is related back to heavenly principles. In China, there's the Tai Chi, the yin and yang. The front of the body is sometimes considered yin, while the back of the body is yang. Then it's believed that Tai Chi gave birth to the Ba Gua, or eight trigrams. And all the joints in your bodies comes in three, just like the Ba Gua. And it's no coincidence that Chinese have based martial arts off of Tai Chi and Ba Gua. Then there's Wu Xing, or the five elements of earth, wood, fire, water, and metal that make up everything in the universe. Did you know that your liver is wood and your lungs are metal? In the West, there's the golden ratio, a ratio of about 1.618 that shows up all over the human body, even your teeth, and can be seen everywhere in nature, from shells to hurricanes to galaxies. And it's inspired Western art and architecture for centuries. So human beings have always been pretty fascinated by the human body. That could explain part of the success of Body Worlds and its derivative, Bodies the Exhibition. These exhibits use a process known as plastination, a process created by Body Worlds creator Gunther von Hagens to preserve actual human corpses so they can be displayed, often in some uh, creative positions. Now, there's been some debate about the morality of doing this if the exhibit is too ghoulish. However, in general, people seem to feel that if the people donated their bodies for this, then this is a really good way to learn about the human body. But so, while most moral debates have focused on whether the concept is good or not, there is actually a far more serious, potentially sinister side to these shows that isn't really getting coverage, that the bodies on display might be from murdered victims. That's what a recent article in the Weekly Standard by China author and researcher Ethan Gutman said. Allegations have been around for a while now that both exhibits use bodies of executed prisoners from China. For a comprehensive look at the issue, please check out this episode of China Focus. We know China gets organs from executed prisoners, and there's growing evidence that those executed don't necessarily have to have committed any crimes or have gone through any kind of legal process. Transplant numbers grew quickly after 1999, and now about 10,000 transplants happen in China each year. But even high estimates of executions couldn't account for the organ sources, because things like tissue matching would require a much bigger pool of organs. So where do those extra organs come from? Eastland Gutman, as well as other investigators, have an answer. Practitioners of Falun Gong, a Buddhist revival movement, he calls it, people murdered by the Communist Party for persisting in their faith after a nationwide crackdown that began in 1999. And what happens to those bodies after they're killed? Plastinated specimens are surprisingly profitable. Could these bodies serve a dual purpose? The allegations about forced organ harvesting came out in 2006. Mr. Gutman said he didn't believe them at first, but after doing some research himself, he concluded that the allegations couldn't be dismissed. Since I want to focus more on Body Worlds and Bodies the Exhibition right now, if you want to know more about the forced organ harvesting of Falun Gong practitioners, you can watch my three-part series, China's Secret Holocaust. So are the bodies at these exhibits, the corpses of Falun Gong practitioners, splayed out in a macabre dance for public amusement and the price of admission? Well, we know that creator Gunther von Hagen set up his plastination plant in Dalian City in Liaoning Province with the help of a man named Sui Hongjing, who would later steal the plastination process and begin either selling or licensing bodies to premier exhibitions, owner and operator of rival exhibit Bodies the Exhibition. Before the split, their factory was approved in 1999, the same year as when the crackdown against Falun Gong began, and was in operation until 2007. So since Chinese people generally don't donate their bodies, and a cadaver has to be fresh for it to be plastinated, where exactly were these bodies coming from? Now, Sui has admitted that he got corpses from China's Public Security Bureau, which means they really could be anyone. And in 2008, Sui was directly accused of using executed prisoners by an unidentified mainland informant on ABC's 2020. 
Von Haggins has avoided most of these allegations because he closed his Dalian plant the year before and has gone on record tearfully saying he destroyed all his Chinese corpses once their origin became suspect. Now, Gutman isn't so sure about that. In his article, he gives several reasons why he thinks that might not necessarily be the case, but he has come up with a pretty brilliant idea that could end the debate once and for all. DNA testing. According to medical experts he contacted, mitochondrial DNA could still be extracted from the preserved specimens. This would determine whether bodies from either exhibit are Chinese. If so, the DNA could be tested against Chinese families who had a loved one disappear during the time when the Dalian factories were cranking out their hellish Barbie and Ken dolls. That might not be as difficult as you think. A Falun Gong run website, Minghui.org, maintains lists of practitioners who have gone missing, including in the Liaoning province, of which there are more than any other province in China. If their families could be made aware of the effort, all it would take would be for a family member to send in a cheek swab to create a DNA link. Now, the problem is this would require permission from Von Hagen's and Sway. Von Hagen's might be interested in this as a way to perhaps once and for all clear his name from all these allegations that have persistently dogged him for years. For Sway, however, if it turns out he's been knowingly making big bucks off murder victims, Mr. Gutman believes this could make him and the exhibition company accessories to crimes against humanity. So what do you guys think about Ethan Gutman's plan? Should Von Hagen's and Sway volunteer up the DNA of the corpses that have made their fortune and fame? If you want to read Ethan Gutman's original article, I've posted a link in the description. For more information, check out China Uncensored Facebook and Twitter page. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new episode. Thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.